recording going here. So this morning, I want to speak with you about freedom. And we live in a place and a time where we can consider ourselves very fortunate. We enjoy much freedom where we live and in this, in, in this present time. You could say that those of us in, in this country, uh, we, we kind of have a fascination with freedom and we want to be free. In fact, people have died and, and uh, gone to great lengths to ensure freedom over the years in this physical realm. But, you know, and when, we, when, when we think about it, some of the things that have been fought for over the years in freedom of and from religion, uh, freedom of speech, and generally the freedom to just do what we want. Human beings, we like to do what we want. Many times we don't like to be told what to do. In fact, we have to learn growing up through our experiences, we have to learn how to be told, how to be corrected. You know, we, we learn from the scriptures that if we are unable to be corrected, that we, that we, have, uh, we have a hard road ahead of us. And for all this freedom that we desire, for all this freedom that we, that we have, especially here in this place and in this time, uh, we need to be careful with that. Do we ever really stop and think about the true freedom that is available to all and what that really means? It's much, it goes much farther beyond being able to do whatever you desire. It goes uh, much deeper than those things that people have fought and died for uh, on, on this earth in times gone by and continue to in some places. We need to really think about the freedom that is offered to us as Christians, the freedom that Christ offers to us. You know, it's, it's quoted to, to Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, ha, having said, with great freedom comes responsibility. Uh, in my research of that statement, uh, I found some evidence that it's much older than that, that it's been said by many people before, uh, but she she definitely is one that, that has brought it to the forefront several years ago. And that's, there's truth in that statement, that when we have such great freedom to do what we want, we have great responsibility to be doing those things that we should do. And when, when we look at, at freedom and you open up the dictionary, the Oxford English Dictionary, for instance, uh, speaks of it as freedom from the state or the state of not being subject to or affected by a particular undesirable thing. You know, in the case of a Christian, you know, we have freedom from sin and death. We have that freedom to not be subject to or affected by sin and death. And sometimes we take that freedom for granted. And we worry so much about the other freedom that we have on this earth. And we spend a great amount, I know I do, spend great amounts of time uh, in my life thinking about such things and thinking about the liberty and the freedom that we have in this country and being thankful for it. But it goes so much deeper than that. We have this freedom to be, to be a Christian, that's to be something that, that's something that we should each be thankful for. That in this place and in this time, we can do just what we're doing right here and not, uh, not, not be in trouble for doing so. And that's something we should be very thankful for. It's something that we should cherish and that we should, we should spur, our, spur each other on all the more to share that hope that we have with others. Now, all mankind should be thankful for the freedom that's available to them in Christ. Uh, most of mankind, it seems, though, doesn't look into the scriptures to know what that freedom is. Has no understanding of what that freedom truly means. You know, in, 
in times like these where we have so many things that are so scary and worrisome in our in our in our culture there there's all of the the the, the physical things that go on the illnesses and so on that that plague mankind we can become very worried and forget about that freedom that we have in Christ that peace that passes all understanding Romans 8 at verse 1 says therefore there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus you know someone who is condemned someone is when you think of the the statement you might hear it in the news that someone is condemned to death row and that person does not have freedom that person does not have the liberty, the ability to come and go and do as they please. We need to realize that if there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that's exactly where we want to be. We don't want to be held captive, imprisoned by sin and death that is right there on our doorstep. It's so easy to be dragged down into such things. What a wonderful statement there we have in Romans. Therefore, there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. So as we go through today's lesson, as we continue to think about these things, ask yourself, are you free? Are you truly free? Yes, you have the ability to get up and walk out of this building. You have the ability and have exercised the ability to get up out of your bed and come here today. And you'll exercise many more rights as you go and, and, and uh, many more freedoms as you go through your daily lives in the future, Lord willing. The next question I want you to ask as we go through this message is, are you in Christ? Because that's where the true freedom is. I hope to bring out throughout the course of this, of this lesson, I hope it makes sense. I hope it's clear that, that we have that true freedom in Christ. And that with that freedom, you know, we, we also, you know, prior to being in Christ, we have that freedom from doing those things which we ought to do. And that's a dangerous thing. That's a dangerous thing to have that freedom. Even though freedom sounds wonderful. When you are a Christian, there are certain things that just by that very nature, you're not going to do. You're not going to be dragged down into so with that freedom comes great responsibility. This freedom that we have in Christ or even, even physically <clears throat> in this place, in this country now, this freedom doesn't negate the consequences of our continued choices. When we make choices on a daily basis and exercise our freedom, those things are going to come with consequences. This freedom that we have you know, it is by the grace of God. We don't earn it. We don't earn this salvation that we speak of on a regular basis. We don't, uh, there's nothing that we could possibly do to earn that salvation. It is by the grace of God. By the grace of God, we have that freedom, that free will to choose to be in Christ or not. As we go through our lives, I hope each and every one of us thinks seriously on this freedom that we have and the decisions we make as a result of it. We have that free will. We want to talk a little bit about freedom and free will. And they're, they're, they're very closely tied. And as I was thinking about it, it's probably just synonymous. They're probably just synonymous with each other. That freedom and free will, they're, they're just knit together there. We have such freedom. Galatians 5 and verse 13 says, For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not turn your freedom into an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. Now we have this free will. We have this freedom that we can make choices. And if we're not careful... And each and every one of us, I'm sure, can attest to this at some time or another in our lives, that we've turned our freedom into an opportunity for the flesh. We've allowed those inward desires uh, to, to take over. And, and I've, uh, just speaking before the, 
before the start of our services with, with Brother Bobby over here, and we were talking about that very thing with you know, uh, the religious world around us, making choices, making choices because of their own desires, because of the, the things that they desire and think are better than those things that Christ has put forth that must be done in his church. We've been called to freedom. Romans 6 at verse 20 says, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in relation to righteousness. And think about that statement for a while. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in relation to righteousness. You were free from those things that, that can be attributed to righteousness, those things that God desires. You're free from that. There are people all around us today that would consider they're probably very happy and very excited that they don't have to go to church, that they don't have to uh, get out of bed early, that they can sleep in or they can do those whatever things they desire to do. They have a project at home. And yes, you have that freedom. But just think about that. If you're slaves of sin, but you're free in another way, you're free from that righteousness, but you're enslaved to sin, which is going to lead to death. Where does that really put you? Where does that put a person? If, yes, you're free, but you're a slave over here. Let's read a little bit of context there in Romans 6, uh, in verse 20 again, beginning. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in relation to righteousness. Therefore, what benefit were you then, deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the outcome of those things is death. But now, having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification and the outcome, eternal life. In verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we exercise our free will, when we exercise our freedom, and we are no longer a slave to sin, when we're alive in Christ, those things that we, that we exercise our freedom doing. You know, we derive that benefit resulting in sanctification, as we read there in verse 22. And thinking back to that freedom that we formerly had, that freedom, as we read there in, in verse 20, when we were slaves of sin, free in relation to righteousness, now again, where does that put us? In the end, when it's all said and done, when we exercise that freedom to be not connected to Christ, when we exercise that freedom to do whatever we desire, when we build up even great wealth and riches on this earth and great comforts of the creature, creature comfort type, you know, what, what is it going to result in? The outcome of those things is death, as we read there in verse 21. Uh, so again, when we have this freedom, this free will, we want to think deeply about it. And we've all heard that statement. Maybe it's been said to us by our parents. I don't know who, don't know who said this first. But you are free to choose, but you're not free from the consequences of your choice. Just as we said a moment ago that with great freedom comes great responsibility. You know, we've, I know I've said this to my children. You can choose that, but going to hurt or that's not going to be your best your best option and while we have this freedom and free will we should think on that that we we are free to choose the lord has given us that ability to choose and uh you know often i think people oftentimes think why did god why, why did god do such a thing why didn't he just make us all to be to be as he wants us to be. Why, why did he leave us this way? To, to have this free will. But, you know, think of it, I've mentioned it before, that think of it like a friendship. You know, your true friends really want to be around you. You don't have to pay them to come around. You don't have to say, hey, would you like to go see a movie? I'll pay you $50 an hour to come sit with me in a movie house. You know, it just doesn't work that way. That, you wouldn't consider that person a free a friend. That's, a, that's an employee. And... Uh, in the same way, at least in my mind, I think of it as, as best I can as a feeble-minded human being. 
the Lord wants us to be his true friend. He wants us to be his true followers of him, not people that are just going after the next shiny thing that they can get. Or, you know, when we think of this reward that we have in heaven, it's not all about that. It's that desire to seek after him because Christ is who he says he is. Christ has been given all authority. And it is truly in our best interest to exercise our freedom and our free will in the direction of righteousness. Galatians 5 verse 1 says, It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore keep standing firm. Do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. You know, as hard as things are in the world, and as we the things that we do understand about, about slavery, as I look around us, here today, I don't see anybody that's been enslaved in that physical way in this life, but but uh, as best we can understand it, you know, losing that freedom, you know, thinking about uh, uh, if you've ever been incarcerated for any period of time. Uh, you know, I was never incarcerated for, for real, but in Boy Scouts, I was taken to a, a jail cell block and locked down. And the cell block just is kind of one of those field trips. And we the good uh, humor of the scoutmasters to lock us all down. And uh, when those doors went shut, when those doors went shut, even though I knew I was going to get out in five minutes, it was that sinking feeling. Of, I, can't, I can't get out of here right now. I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck. And in that same way, if you can relate to that in some way, the... Uh, Sin does the same thing to us. It, it keeps us from having the peace and that freedom that we really, truly all are offered if we just obey. Freedom takes hard work. There's, uh, it's often been said that there's nothing worth having that isn't hard to get. It doesn't take some hard work to get it along the way. Romans 8 at verse 6, For the mind set on the flesh is death. But the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. And literally, that, that, that word set is literally of the. Uh, for, so for the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. And how do you expect that we get that mind of the spirit? We get that from the word. And... You know, if we spend our time living our lives, using, exercising our freedom, giving ourselves the mind of the flesh, the mind that uh, closely relates to all those things we see on television and, you know, will make you many friends per perhaps on this earth, uh, you know, that, 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 that is not going to give us peace. It's going to give us death. Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 17. And if children, heirs, also heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Even though we suffer at times in these, these tribulations of life, you know, we have things that happen to us in our, in our lives. You know, the uh, idea of suffering, Thayer says it's to suffer or feel pain together. To suffer evils, or in this case, in like manner with another. To share in those burdens. When we are heirs of God, heirs with Christ, we suffer with him in a like manner. Those same things that, that he's gone through in his life, we also we're going to suffer through some of those things. And these things that we suffer through, these hard times, whether it be you know, the, the, the physical ailments, whether it be um, the decisions that we make that alien, alienate us from the, from the world, from our friends in this world, you know, that suffering is not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. We have so much more to look forward to. It's so much deeper than just a comfortable place for us after this life. But to be 
in Christ is so much more. The reward is worth the work. Now, Romans 8, starting at verse 5, to, to give some context to our first statement there. For those who are in accord with the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are in accord with the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. In verse 6, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace. Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You now there in verse 7, uh, that mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. It doesn't subject itself to to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. You know, think about all of the, the people in this world, some of us being some of them at one point in our lives, where we might have said, yes, I love God, but we were setting our mind on fleshly things, on earthly things, and didn't give much thought to the things of God. Maybe have had a Bible sitting, many Bibles maybe, sitting in our bookshelves and never cracked them open to look. How, how could we be subject to the law of God if we don't know what it says? The mind set on the flesh, those things that you live day in, day out, fleshly things, that's what you're going to work towards. If you live day in and day out, putting your, your mind into the Word, Filling your heart with those things that the Lord has revealed to us through his word. Then we'll have that mind of Christ. We'll be able to subject ourselves to the law of God because we'll know what it says. We'll be able to do so. We don't want to be those that are not even able to subject ourselves to the law of God. Freedom takes work. If we want to be free, if we want to be truly free... We have to put in the time. We have to put in the time for study. We have to put in the time to uh, put those things into practice. You know, as it is often prayed at the end of a of a service like this, that we would uh, that we would go out and put these things into practice. And that's exactly what we need to do. And it, it's hard work. Being free takes work. Now we have again freedom from sin in Christ. We read in Romans 6, starting at verse 11, So you too consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore sin is not to reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its lusts. And do not go on presenting the parts of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who are alive from the dead, and your body's parts as instruments of righteousness for God. You know, if we if we are to have that freedom from sin, we need to subject, put our abilities to work so that we can carry out that will of the Lord, so that we can share with others, so that we can be obedient. You know, if you're here today, ask that question again, are you free? Are you Free, truly free. Yes, again, you can walk out and be free to do whatever you please in this wonderful country that we live in. That we should be thankful for each and every day. That we have a place that allows us to do such things. We have Facebook, we have social media at our fingertips, most likely, when we go home. Look, look, look up some other people in some other areas of the world. Uh, I, I've come to be friends with on Facebook with some friends, some Christians from other parts of the world over the past couple of years, and, and they have not always been free to gather and assemble. They have not always been free to do the things that they desire to do. In fact, uh, in some places, in order to get Bibles the word of God into people's hands, sometimes it's smuggled in uh, because it is, uh, it is not, it's frowned upon uh, by the powers that be in that area. Now we have such freedom, but are we truly free? Have you been set free from sin? 
when you get to your last breath, whenever that may be? Can you take that last breath comfortably, knowing that you've been obedient to the gospel of Christ, knowing that you are truly free when you're set free from the bonds of this earthly body, that you're going to continue to be free in a sense that you cannot even comprehend and have the ability to be with the Lord forever? Or will we allow our fleshly lusts and desires to imprison us, put us in a place of fear when we take that last breath, that we have nothing but fiery damnation to look forward to? Are you truly free? Are you in Christ? Can you say that you've put on Christ? Many people, if you ask that question, go out on the streets of the world today, many people claim to be a Christian. Many people claim Christianity. Yet, again, how can they be subject to the law of God if they haven't put forth the effort to look? Many people don't look. They take someone's word for it. Don't take my word for it. I hope that you've taken notes. I hope that you know you can catch the recording of this lesson later. Fact check me. <laughs> Make sure that I've been telling you the truth. Uh, look for yourself. Are you truly free? Are you in Christ? Do you have freedom from sin? You know, Ecclesiastes 12, uh, starting at verse 13, a famous verse amongst us. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, at verse 13 says, says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Are you in Christ today? We understand from the scriptures that hearing must take place. Romans 10:17 reminds us and tells us that faith comes by hearing, that belief comes by hearing. And again, how can you be subject to the law of God if you don't know what it says? We must hear the word must believe that he is who he says he is. And once you've crossed that threshold and you believe that he is who he says he is, you've got no other choice. The, the, the next logical step is to repent and turn away from those old ways, understanding what godliness is, understanding what those things that will truly make you free are. And then confessing Christ before men, not being ashamed of him, but being able to confess Christ before men, stand with him. He will stand with you on that day of judgment. Being baptized, buried in the waters of baptism, raised to walk in a newness of life, uh, a life that is freer than you can imagine, freer than our feeble human minds can comprehend. And then once we've been raised out of those waters of baptism, that's the beginning. That's the beginning of this new life, and we must remain faithful. Revelation 2.10 tells us that if we're faithful until death, we'll receive that crown of life. If you're sitting here today, I ask you one more time, are you free? Are you in Christ? The waters of baptism are ready. Behind us, we can, we can assist you in that today if, that, if you've come to that decision. If you need the prayers of the saints... If you need some, some help along the way, that's what we're here for as a family. Let us pray with you, pray for you, be a support to you. We can lean on one another while we each lean on the law of the Lord that will make us free. If you're subject to the invitation, don't hesitate. Please come forward as we stand and sing.